this is the reason why I press folks to make sure I see you in church. Amen. Amen. It, it's, it's not just because I want to see your beautiful, smiling face, which some of you all aren't smiling right now, but it's okay. I'll work on that. I'll try to work on that. But it's because it's only in the ecclesia, it's only in yes. the place yes. where God has created you to be called to that you can actually find the, the answer to the deepest needs that are on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. So let, let's, let's get into this. The first metaphor that the Bible describes as the church is the one that we're all relatively familiar with. It's called the family. Okay. And, and in a healthy family, one of the benefits of being in a healthy family is that you are taught who you are. You learn your identity. So the first thing I want you to write down if you're taking notes is that the first benefit is that in God's family, I learn my true identity. Amen. You're not going to learn it from the world. You're not going to learn it from your parents. You're not going to learn it from your peers or anybody else. Your true identity is found in your relationship to God's family. I feel like I got some work to do. Y'all are mighty quiet out there. <laughs> Come on now. You know, most people, if not all of us, are concerned about our identity. Uh, the, what we do in order to establish our identity in many instances is that, you know, our clothes tend to tell us or give people an inkling as to who we are. The brand somehow uh, tell folks as well as to tell us uh, something that is important to us. We intentionally look for things based on logos from Starbucks to Apple. We've been convinced that these kinds of things are going to make us have some sort of an identity. Mm. For we find our identity in the clothes we wear, the brands mm. that we use, and even in the logos uh, that we attach ourselves to. But the truth is most of our identities come from our relationships. For good or for bad, if you have good relationships, you're going to have a pretty good identity. If you have bad relationships, your identity is going to be a little more difficult. If, uh, if I was to express to you a little bit about my identity, I'm a grandson, I'm a son, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a team member, I'm a life group participant, I'm a pastor. All of these things, all of these relationships define who I am, uh, but you know that your relationship helps you to understand who you are, and it also helps you to communicate who you are. But what that means is that if my connections or my relationships get broken, mm -hmm. Amen. my connections and my relationships to myself now come into question. Mm. Mm. Okay, let's go to work. I, I, I have a hard time knowing who I really am if I have a hard time relating to people. Mm -hmm. See, many, many of us are familiar with divorce, and if you've ever experienced divorce, after you get divorced, there's a serious time of questioning as to who am I? Because your relationship was tied to that person. Or for some who have been married for some time and, and, and that loved one, that spouse passes, it's very common, very natural, very normal for people to think, who am I and what is my place? What is my role? Or if you get laid off from your job, your identity has been tied to work and now you're going, okay, well, who, who, who am I? So our identity is actually tied to our relationships. Now here's the problem. A lot of us don't have very good relationships. Well, we didn't have well. them growing up. Some of us grew up in dysfunctional situations and broken families. So, so for you, mm, your identity has always been an enigma. Because some of us have even been in situations and grew up in non-existent families. So therefore, your identity was always shifting for... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 I wish there was somebody out here Amen. that would help me go through this. Uh, In Ephesians 2.19, it says, You are members of God's very own family, and you belong to God's household with every other Christian. It doesn't matter what other families you had. Okay. Amen. 
The, the most important family is the family of God. Why? Because it's the permanent one. Wow. Yes, yes. It's the one that's going to last. As a matter of fact, it's going to last forever. Forever. Your physical family was just the channel that God used to get you here. <coughs> yes, yes. And, and, and this might be a little shocking, but uh, in actuality, your spiritual family is more important than your physical family. Why? Because physical families don't last. Amen. Amen. People grow up. Mm -hmm. People move away. Mm -hmm. People get divorced. People die. No physical family lasts, and we know that. But your spiritual family is going to go on forever. In fact, God created the entire universe for his spiritual family, which is called the church. When you get your identity from that, then you have a long-term identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm stepping Amen. on some toes. <laughs> the, the problem that, that we're going to try to look at for identifying things is by looking at the thing that lasts forever in order to identify mm -hmm. ourselves. See, the world judges your identity by the external things, not the internal things. The world says to you that you're short, you're, you have black hair, you're an African-American, you're white, you're Latino, you're a part of this political persuasion, that this is your job, that you're American. And these are all interesting identifiers, but none of them are going to last. Amen. 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 None of them are going to last. Yes, I'm an African-American black man, uh, but there's something more important than that. It's the family of God. Amen. It's the fact that I'm a member of the family Amen. of God. Being African American ain't going to last forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so you don't want to identify yourself by something that is not going to last. Amen. You don't want that to be the primary focus for how you are known and how you know things. The Bible says that God's family, the church, is going to go on for eternity because he made the entire universe for that. Hebrews uh, 11, or Hebrews 2 and 11 says this, Jesus and the people he makes holy all belong to the same family. This is why he isn't ashamed to call you his brother or his sister. Mm -hmm. Did you know that Jesus calls you his brother or his sister? I guess maybe you, you came in and you know you're holy. Mm -hmm. But for, for me, that's an amazing mm -hmm. epiphany. That he's not ashamed yes. to call yes. me his brother. Yes. Mm. Yes. Have you ever had a sibling that you were ashamed of? Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> See, because you may have. But, but it's important to know that Jesus is not ashamed of you. It's important to know that Jesus still considers you, no matter how messed up your life is, to be considered a sibling <laughs> of his. Why? Thank because you. you're in the family. Thank you, Jesus. This is one Thank of the greatest God. things about yeah. being in the family of God. Your yeah. sins do not define you yeah. anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Thank you, God. See, yeah, you and I have sinned, but it is not your defense. Right. Let, let me explain it this way. Uh, see, many of us uh, are familiar with, uh, and I won't say that it's personally, but we're all familiar, at least in namesake, uh, 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 about an organization called Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. it, it's a program uh, that, that many folks have, have found great recovery in. Uh, but there's a, another program uh, called Celebrate Recovery, which Rick Warren put together. Um, and it was started by Saddleback. Now, Alcohol Anonymous is a good program. As a matter of fact, it's a very good program. But Celebrate Recovery is a whole lot better. Okay. Let, let, let me tell you the okay. reason why it's a whole lot better. And it's one main reason. And the main reason why it's better is because it's Christ-centered. Celebrate recovery uh, uh, does not allow you to let your sin define you because your sin is not your identity. Let me see if I can break that down. See, if you were to go to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, you would stand up and say, Hi, my name is Alan and I'm an alcoholic. And you would be saying that yeah. for the rest of your You're life, right, right. letting your sin right. define right. you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. In yes. Celebrate yes. Recovery, people stand up and say, hi, my name is Alan. I'm a child of God who struggles with alcohol. All right, yeah, yeah. 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 The difference is saying, 
I struggle with lying or I'm saying I'm a liar. There's a huge difference, difference. between yeah. right. the yeah. two. Yeah. Right. Your identity is not tied to your sin. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus isn't ashamed to call you his brother. That's why Jesus isn't ashamed to call you his sister. Because once you're in the family, you're in the family. Amen. Mm -hmm. You might be a little weird. <laughs> but you're in the family. You may have some sins in your life, but you're in the family. And a brother sticks up for a brother. brother. Amen. A Amen. 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 And the Bible says Jesus is not ashamed to call you his sibling. By belonging to God's family, you will learn your true identity, the identity that was kept hidden from you by the world because the world doesn't want you to know what God has made you to be. Amen. See, Amen. a lot of families advertise uh, who they are. They have identifying marks and characteristics. Uh, in the, the Scottish community, they have kilts. In other communities, they have family crests. In gangs, they have tattoos. Uh, but, but do you know what the mark, what the symbol is for being in the family of God? It's baptism. It's baptism. It's, it, it's being baptized is the public symbol that says, I am not ashamed uh, to be a part of God's family. It's my advertisement to the world that I don't fully understand it all, but I'm in it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you haven't been baptized, then let me just offer to you an invitation to get baptized because you have to be baptized. It's the symbol that says that I'm in the family. It's your public proclamation. It's your coming out party. You and I both need to be baptized because it says that I'm in the family. And as a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 2, it says this. Those who believe what Peter had said were baptized and added to the church about 3,000 in one day. Amen. Ooh. Amen. Amen. So, did you catch that? So, you believe, you get baptized, you get added to the church. Mm. You believe, you get baptized, you get added to the church. That, that's the first metaphor. I'm in the family of God, and the family helps me understand my true identity. The second metaphor, y'all all right? Yes. The second metaphor that God uses to describe the church is, he says the church is like a temple. The church is like a temple. In other words, it's like a building that is erected for God's glory. It's a building where God's presence shows up, where God is loved, where God is honored and worshipped. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says this, Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and his spirit lives in you. He's talking to the church. Now, I, I've noticed um, that uh, there are thousands of different pieces that, that are used in order to build a building. And, and, but the most important thing is that the pieces have to fit together. Mm -hmm. If you have a beam that's a half inch too short, it doesn't hold up the roof. Right, right. If you have a pipe that is one inch too long, it doesn't make the connection. Right. If you don't make the connection, then you don't have a building. Right, right. Okay, I feel like uh -huh. I'm missing it. A building cannot stand on its own power unless it has connection, unless the things fit together. Amen. You know, I've also noticed that whenever you're building something uh, that uh, at a construction site, there's always a lot of stuff lying around on the ground. There are spare parts. There are, are spare pieces of wood, and, and, and there are spare pieces of pipe uh, that are just lying around on the, on the ground. But you know what I've also noticed about that? Uh, that? That being a pipe or a piece of wood in a building but not necessarily belonging to the building doesn't mean that you're actually part of it. If you're lying around on the ground in the building, but you're not connected to the building, you're not really a part of the building. 